we are entering upon the high point of the whole liturgical year, and as friends of the Lord, we do well to celebrate it with our heart in simplicity of intimacy and quiet times. That is when things are allowed to sink in and to touch us on the level of relationship. It is no use if we just have a liturgy but we don't meet the Lord. To help you to meet him as your personal saviour, I would like to quote one paragraph of some intuition that was given to Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich of the pain that our Lord underwent for you and for me. Some of our crucifixes do not actually convey fully the fact that we have to do with an execution, with something which was not at all antiseptic. It was the greatest pain that could be invented, as it were, for a man. So we have this from what she was given to see in ecstasy when she saw this dreadful scene. Jesus was now stretched on the cross by the executioners. He had laid himself on it. That's interesting. The sacrificial lamb who willingly puts himself on the cross. But they pushed him lower down into the hollow places, rudely drew his right hand to the hole for the nail in the right arm of the cross, and tied his wrist fast. Now, we have evidence from the Holy Shroud that there was a dislocation happening. They were forcing this. It wouldn't fit otherwise. And we know that Mel Gibson based the Passion on what he read in these visions of Anne Catherine Emmerich, and he reproduces that scene of the dislocation of one shoulder. One knelt on his sacred breast and held the closing hand flat. Another placed the long, thick nail, which had been fired to a sharp point, upon the palm of his sacred hand, and struck furious blows with the iron hammer. Now listen to this. Normally, a man in pain becomes uncontrollable, but watch here the dignity of the Saviour. A sweet, clear, spasmodic cry of anguish broke from the Lord's lips. And his blood, that's the blood that redeemed us, and which can still be seen on Calvary. If you go to the Holy Land, you will see that they have deliberately left under glass open the sacred blood which all the pilgrims right through the ages have seen. It left a trace on the split rock. The rock split, and this blood can be seen there in it on Calvary. The blood which redeemed us. And his blood spurted out upon the arms of the executioners. The muscles and ligaments of the hand had been torn, and by the three-edged nail driven into the narrow hole. I counted the strokes of the hammer, but my anguish made me forget their number. The Blessed Virgin, we call her co-redemptrix, insofar as she was, as it were, consenting to the sacrifice on the level of the will, and therefore was the queen of martyrs. Think of the pain of a mother. The Blessed Virgin sobbed in a low voice, but Magdalene was perfectly crazed. If the help that we have through these visions are any use to you, just get hold of her, because she's still in print. Town have reprinted her, and they do help at this time of year, as does the film of Mel Gibson based upon it. This came to me from a friend in England the other day, and it shows, in a way, the modern equivalent. You can't quite see it, but I'll tell you what it is. It's the new batch of martyrs. 
It's happening all the time in the Islamic bloc, as we know. They are genuinely on the cross of Jesus. And the same pattern emerges. I haven't seen them, but I'm told they're out on YouTube. You can see things going on there. And something emerges. A pattern emerges, not dissimilar to what we've just read. They go to the cross in prayer mode. They do not complain. They offer themselves. They are given strength to maintain their dignity. And they are as lambs led to the slaughter. While quite often ritual prayers are being chanted or whatever to Allah, as though this was a ritual sacrifice in his honour. But these are this batch of, I'm not sure how many are there, on the shore, you can see the water where they are about to be beheaded. One of them is a different colour, he's dark, and I think there's a story behind that. Wasn't he someone who saw them and was taken by it and was given the grace also to join their number. Things can happen at the last minute, can't they, before martyrdom. These are our brethren, the modern martyrs. So also are the huge numbers tortured and martyred in all those camps of communist Russia and China and all these other countries in the last century. A vast number, greater than in the early church all on the cross with Jesus. Would you like a story in the back there? It's true. It's a modern version. It happened some years ago before the veil was lifted in communist Russia. It was a priest of the Eastern Church who was discreetly doing all he could to diffuse the word of God, but the authorities copped on and traced the author of these little tracts that were circulating. They took him and treated him accordingly, leaving his presbytera, that's the wife of the Eastern priest, alone to carry on the different ministry that they had, which was nevertheless quietly efficacious. How could they trace where this was coming from? They did so through the fact that those working in offices were using government property because these typewriters were all really part of the system and they traced carefully why there was one letter not functioning properly. They therefore got to the person who was actually using office equipment to print these tracts. They took her and started to interrogate her. She would not open her mouth. Why do you not speak? He, meaning Jesus, will not allow me. They wanted to know who else was involved, of course. Eventually, they were going from punishment to punishment. At one point, she was dragged back to her cell by one of the tormentors. And at that stage, she couldn't move herself. He had to take her physically. And something in him moved. And she felt it. It was that tiny spark of human pity that was in him that ignited. And she said to him, just about to breathe as yet, God reward you for this gentleness. That hit him. The others were still keen on getting all the information they could out of her. They knew that there was one way that probably would work, but it would need four strong men. He, this fourth one, realized what they were about to do. But what could he do against the others? He only had one language, the language of the underground that he was engaged in. 
he got his revolver and started to shoot at the others. They immediately started to shoot back. And in the process, she was hit in the crossfire. And so was he. She was by then expiring like the Lord on the cross and in her last breaths. And she said, I am dying. He also by then was in the same predicament and was expiring. He went up to her with the last bit of energy that he had and she said to him, holding out her dying hand, Come. And they both died holding hands.